the East Coast, West Coast. I don't know. It's probably morning somewhere. Good morning, good, good afternoon, wherever you're coming from. We're making unicorn macarons today. Who is baking with us? Who's baking at the same time? Okay, can you guys hear me okay? A little early, just gonna set everything up. Let me know if you can hear me in the live chat. Tell me where you're coming from. Say hi to everyone else. Hello, Marcia. How's it going? Monique, hello from Nova Scotia. Katisuka. Katisuka, hello. Rio de Janeiro, hello. Wow, perfect, you can hear me. Hi, Nick. Oh, good. I'm so glad. It's unicorn time, as David said. Priscilla from New York City. I like your name. Maureen, hello. Hello from Chile. Jennifer from British Columbia and Ohio. We got a couple people from the U.S. and a lot abroad. I'm so happy you guys are here. We're making unicorns. Can you hear me okay with the dehumidifier. It's a pretty humid day. It started pouring here and then now it's kind of settled down and the sun's trying to shine but I need to run that dehumidifier. From San Diego, hello from Orlando. Perfect. Okay, good. Thank you, David. I'm going to turn my gas oven on to preheat. I'm gonna be doing French method in our mixer with the Seth drop whisk method. So I have a small batch, but I'm still gonna use my KitchenAid because why not? Now that we know how to make a really nice meringue with a small batch with our KitchenAid, I'm just gonna have that whisk not in the lock position. So then it's able to efficiently whip up my egg whites and still have a stable meringue. So we're gonna use the small small batch we're gonna use our KitchenAid still 60 grams of egg whites so if you know my base recipe is off of 100 grams of egg whites liquid egg whites so whenever I scale back like I'll break open two eggs and whatever that is this was 60 grams today with two egg whites so I just did multiply everything by 0.6 all the ingredients by 0.6 and you have your new ratios for the same recipe but scaled down. Hi, Steffi. Uh, let me see. Oh, Steffi, I'm so sorry to hear that. <sighs> Sending love to you. Happy you're here. Maybe some unicorn magic will bring a smile to your face. That is not an easy thing to deal with. I've got my, one of my dogs is turning 13 this year and it's just hard to see them getting older. So, my sending love. San Antonio. Yay, I'm, David, I'm so glad you told Seth about it. Um, I feel like he just needs all of the, all the love for letting us use our KitchenAid more. Like, I, I'm so excited not to have to hold my hand mixer. Cause, I mean, the hand mixer works great if you don't own a KitchenAid. Hand mixer's wonderful, but this is nicer, like lazy people status, so. Not lazy, I feel like I'm calling people lazy. It gives your arm a break. Okay, <laughs> okay. Steffi, yes, yeah, sending love. All right, so it is, are we at one o'clock yet? My class is watching the gym. Oh, Chef Basil, hello. You have a class going on? Well, I'm 
I'm a little nervous to have a whole class watching me, but I'm so glad you're here, Chef. I will be watching on the live chat for the questions. Okay, we're almost at 1 p.m. I think we're at 1. I'm having my phone for streaming does not allow me to have an accurate clock. But um, we're gonna we're gonna go for it. So again, we're using 60 grams of egg whites. So my base recipe is 100 grams. This is gonna be 60% of that total uh, recipe. If you haven't seen my recipe, just go screenshot it. It's on my 101 macarons uh, video on my channel. Usually, it's one of the first videos that shows up, and. Um, it's off of 100 grams of egg whites, and then it goes from there. So this is 60 grams egg whites, same recipe, just scaled down, 54 grams of granulated sugar. I don't bother with caster sugar. I feel like granulated sugar dissolves just fine into uh, our egg whites without having to use the extra fine sugar. Uh, and then I also use three, three grams. Hi, Anna, I'm so happy you're here. Three grams of egg white powder today because it was raining, so I went for the 4%. I always say three to 4% dried egg whites to your liquid egg whites. So total, my total egg whites is 60 grams for the scaled down recipe. So I multiplied that by 0.3 or 0 .4, 0 0.03 or 0.04 to be three to 4%, and that's how much egg white powder I use. So we have three grams today on the higher end because it's rain, it was raining. And then I have 78 grams of both confectioner sugar and almond flour. If you're not in the States and your confectioner sugar does not already have cornstarch put into it, I recommend adding a tablespoon of cornstarch into your dries um, to help it not clump up together. So this is almond flour, confectioner sugar, all mixed into a homogenous mixture. You can't tell where the confectioner sugar is and where the almond flour is. This helps the sugar kind of um, encapsulates the fat of the almond flour, right? So you have a little bit more time when macronaging, when you mix these nicely together first. And also you get them evenly dispersed better as well. Okay, we're making unicorns. I think it was Affy suggested I show how to put the dries into the KitchenAid as well. So I'll try it, it might be too small of a batch. I'll kind of throw them in and if it's not incorporating well, I'll switch it to my bowl and macronage in my bowl. Oh, let's go. Okay, Seth's drop myth whisk method. I'm gonna un put it in the unlock position. Again, we're making French macarons today. I've got everything prepped. I've got my mats here with a template I sent out in my last newsletter, template for the macarons, all ready to go because we don't want our batter having to wait. And I have a big tip, this is nine millimeter tip, prepared for the circles, and then a small six to four millimeter tip for the ears and the horn. Okay, and I need, I need one thing from you guys. Do you want, white unicorns or light pink unicorns? Let me know first to answer in the live chat. We'll do color or just leave them white. Pink, okay, someone said pink, we're doing pink. Thanks, Nick. All right, here we go. Excuse the noise for the next like eight minutes. Gonna get it whisking. And I'm gonna move you guys in so you can see what's going on inside the bowl. Hi, Katie. Trying to get you guys a good spot. Sorry. My apologies for the movement. I want you to be able to see in the bowl, you know? Why is this one? 
Okay, we're foamy, so I'm gonna start adding in my sugar. Well, this is crooked. Sugar, two additions. You could do it all in one. I'm just used to doing it in two. Let it dissolve a little bit and then I'll put in my second. This also has that egg white powder and I mixed it together so the egg white powder is all throughout the sugar so it doesn't clump. Hi, Nancy. Right now, I am on speed two. Just to get it incorporated, but I'll go up to a four pretty quick here. Hi from Mexico City. Hi, Sylvia. Salud. Okay, now I'm gonna be at a four. Yeah, I didn't block the whisk. It's just able to reach a little bit lower down on the in the bowl and it whips up the small batches better. Hello Michelle, Pacific Northwesterner. So when you do this drop whisk method, just make sure you lock it back into place when you do lift it up or else it falls. I'm gonna put the, the color in. We're gonna do um, the Sugar Art Powdered Color Master Elite Coral. Just a little bit because I don't want it too dark. I want to be able to see the gold, the gold decorations and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna do a, a teeny bit to get it a really nice light color. So that is probably like a sixteenth of a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna drop it back down low. Bring it up slow. Back to a four slowly. I love powdered colors because then you don't have to worry about adding too much moisture into your batter. So this is the sugar art. Yeah, this is Fr French method. We're not doing Swiss method. Um, that's where I would have cooked on a double boiler the egg whites a little bit and, and dissolved up the sugar on the double boiler and then brought it over. We're just doing sugar in the raw form in, into making the meringue here. I'm gonna turn it up to a six. And we're gonna go till, till we're nice and um, stiff piece. Um, they can use uh, Judy's egg white powder. Yes, that's what I use. Dora 
what's a wish list? I'm not sure what that is. Guava, Steffi. I'm not sure. I haven't worked too much with guava paint. So we're still working them. I'm going to go to an eight. And then I'll check the stiffness. And I'll answer some of your questions in a second. I'll definitely talk about this drop whisk method from Steph um, when this is off. I don't know if you can see, there's like some striations in the bowl. So we know we're getting closer, but not quite yet. Hello from Brooklyn, New York. I'm so glad you tried the French method and liked it. I know. I feel like there are, are good times to use Italian, good times to use Swiss, good times to use French. It's really up to the baker and what they prefer. Okay, I'm going to put you guys a little bit down again. Okay, so we got some structure here. Let's check our meringue, okay? Dora, I do bake higher than I do without. So it's clumped around the whisk, which is good. It's nice and um, stiff. It's not moving anywhere, but I wanna make sure that's true all the way around my bowl. So I always do a little check. And this is okay when it's this long, of course it's gonna curl a little bit, but you want to make sure in your bowl, your scene, it's nice and stiff. See, it's not moving anywhere. I'm gonna go like 30 seconds more. This looks really nice. Okay. And the drop whisk method is that instead of locking this whisk in place, I'm leaving it loose so it is lower in my bowl and will whip up this smaller batch better. That's all. So 30 seconds real fast and then I'm good. Hi Anna from Sweden. Hi from Poland. Um, okay, so I forgot it wasn't locked. I was trying to unlock it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I have like everything that I say comes in song. Okay. This is nice and stiff. See how it's holding its shape throughout the entire bowl. You see the striations from the whisk being held. That's nice. Okay. I'm going to go with this. And like I said, I'm going to showcase... Afi had asked if I could put some dries in the mixer. So let's keep this angle and I'm gonna switch to my paddle and see if this small batch is okay for, I've never done it with this small of a batch, but I'm gonna put some of my dries in. Let's do half and then half and just slowly on stir, mix it in. It's gonna help our arms not have to do so much work when it's like 70% incorporated. What I don't like about this is that, I'll show you, the bottom of my bowl, see all the dries down there? I hate that. Then I'm like scraping the bottom and ruining the meringue and deflating it. So I think with the smaller batches, that might be more of the case. You might get more stuff on the bottom. So just beware of that. So that's half of it. And then we'll do the other. 
and you guys know me, I like to finish in a bowl no matter what. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more and then I'll move it over to my bowl, my wide, wide mouth bowl, which is nice and easy to see what's happening in it. Okay. So, that's as much as I'm gonna do because I see a ton on the bottom here and I don't want to give that any more time to just sit and have everything else deflate while I'm not incorporating that. But that's definitely something you can do, especially with bigger batches. I feel like you get less stuck to the bottom and it does save some arm work. You can just put those dries in right away. You just need to be careful with the deflating, right? because you want to still be able to control the consistency and make sure everything is incorporated well before you lose all that, that air that we've just whipped up into our meringue, okay? See all those little bits and pieces still? So I'm just gonna make sure that it's all gonna come with me into my bowl and transfer into my wide mouthed bowl. I feel like there's another name for wide mouthed bowls and I'm not thinking of it. Okay, here we go. This is a nice, a nice um, light coral pink. I'm loving it. I wanted to make sure it wasn't too dark and then you wouldn't be able to see the gold accents or the facial. Like I wanna put blush on. So I wanna make sure the blush, is, you can see the blush. We can do gold blush instead of a blush color. Okay, so here we go. I still have dries that are visible. So I wanna keep just folding. I'm not gonna deflate yet. I'm not gonna do the macronage process quite yet. And when I say macronage process, that's the actual act of deflating to the right consistency. So right now I'm just getting those dries in and then we'll do the macronage. So not at all at a flowing consistency. Good thing, because I still have a ton of clumps, but um, I'm ready to start really incorporating and, and deflating. So I'm gonna push out and then around, and then I tumble it a few times, and then again, push out the air against the side of the bowl. And you just wanna keep checking. If you're new to making macarons, don't be afraid to like check every, every time you press, just to make sure the consistency hasn't gone too far. But it does take a while. So just keep going trying to get those clumps out that were from the bottom of the, the mixer. Okay, let's see where we're at. So we're flowy, but we could definitely be a little bit more consistent with our flow. Still, it's not melding upon itself as quickly as I would like. So I'm gonna keep going. Little quarter in, oops, quarter turns up with my bowl as I go all the way around. And when you're doing um, little unicorns, you have those horns and the ears, right? So you wanna be careful that your batter is not too liquidy or else those are just gonna spread all into one clump. So you have to be careful. Beware of over mixing when you're doing shapes. See how quickly now it's kind of melding? I can see it, the act of it way faster than before. In about 15 to 20 seconds, I want it to even out where I know once I pipe it, it's not gonna have a little bump from the piping tip 
and it will be nice and level once I pipe out. So I'm happy with this and I'm gonna put it into my piping bags. I still have a few lumps from mixing those dries in, but see how that is flowing nicely? That's good, okay. Let me move, actually let's keep you down because we're gonna pipe. So this one has my bigger tip. So I'm gonna put most of my batter into here. Because I don't need a ton for the ears and the horn. Let's see. <clears throat> This one's the smaller tip. I'm just gonna do that much and put the rest into my big one. I don't like using small tips if I don't have to because the batter gets worked more as it goes through a small tip. So just beware that your batter does get even more runny as it's pushed through a small tip. Um, Louisa asked about kisses from Spain. Hi, Anna. Thank you. Hello from Idaho. Corey um, asked about humidity. I have noticed that anywhere under like 56% humidity in my house is good for macarons. Anything higher than that is not my favorite. So right now I'm at 52%, so we should be okay. But... Um, you definitely want to beware. So just kind of pushing up the batter to the tip so that's ready to go. This is called a bench scraper. They have metal ones, but those hurt your piping bags. These are Shop the Flower Girls. They're not silicone, but they're like it. They're reusable. They're really great, really easy to, to um, wash. And those, I guess, Silicone isn't the best for the environment either. These are made with something that is better for the environment. Okay, let's see here. Hi from Germany. You know what, um, Catherine? Catherine, it's really up to the baker. I like a really hard spatula. I use this one and it's super, super stiff but I've heard others love a nice, um, sorry, I'm trying to get us at a better angle for you, like a looser spatula. So unfortunately, can't answer that. There's no right or wrong. It's truly up to what you feel more comfortable with. Okay, this is a French steel pan. I'll be using this for my toaster oven. I'm gonna move this. I'm put some gloves on because I will be putting some sprinkles on too, even though they're baked. Let's just put gloves on. These don't go to anyone. Sometimes I bring them to work, my husband's work, so I'm not too concerned, but that's just in case. So the, my batter's gonna spread a little bit, so I'm not gonna fill all the way to this outer circular line on my template. I'm gonna go like a quarter of an, uh, I don't even know how far it would be. I'll try to show. So we're gonna pipe and then, so we're about a quarter of an inch maybe away from the line. So I'm just gonna do a line of these and then I'll do the ear. Okay, I haven't done this for a year since my daughter's sixth birthday, which is her seventh birthday is next next week. So just a little dab up and then you can fix it with a scribe. This is called a scribe or you can get a toothpick if you don't have that. And don't worry about like having it all be super uni uniform uniform unicorns because 
these aren't going to be paired with another face. These are gonna be paired with just a base, a circular base. So, you know, don't worry if it doesn't go to, you don't want that tip to be super, super pointed or else your tip will burn. So um, you don't have to worry about it not being exact. I'm actually gonna just do every other one. So I have a base. I kind of just bring it like a little dollop and then bring it in. Dollop a daisy. And just take your scribe, make sure it's attached. And then you can make your ears pointy or more rounded, whatever you prefer. So now we've got a, a front and a back for two of them, right? So I'll do that down here. I've got a, um, my paper is overlapped right here, so I can't do right there. So horn, ear, ear, horn, uh, ear, horn, ear. <laughs> just make sure your horn is longer than your ears and it will look just fine once you put the the eyes and everything on there. Let me do one more base for this guy. And then I'm gonna switch to my gas stove. Okay. So because I, I get a, a good amount of no the feet don't develop here as well because of these lips. So I'm trying not to crowd my pan. So I will hope to have some feet. So we've got one, two, three, four on this little tray. We're gonna use that in here, turbo convection. But before my shells dry, sorry, I want to turbo bake 300, start. Before my shells dry, I wanna put some, some cute sprinkles on. So talking about sprinkles, these are fancy sprinkles. You can use whatever sprinkles you want, but you don't wanna use these huge, this is chocolate. This will melt a hole right through your macarons. Don't use these on top of your Macs unless you put them on after baking. Uh, same with these candies. These are like um, kind of like sweet tarts kind of thing. I don't know how to explain them, but they're um, super delicious. But if you bake on them, they melt as well. So just get the little jimmies and the stars and you can make like a little crown with them. And if you want to be really specific, you can get little food, food grade tweezers and get your star and put it on there. So you got two stars put a blue star on this one. Let's get a blue sprinkle on and a, a pink sprinkle. And the ones that I posted on Instagram today, if you have Instagram, those were, I used marshmallows from Lucky Charms to sprinkle like the little decorative crown, which are really fun too, because then you fill them with Lucky Charm filling, and then the outside shell really depicts what flavor your customer's getting, which is nice. Nice and easy for your customer to be like, oh, those are Lucky Charm marshmallows. That's flavored Lucky Charms. You don't confuse anybody. There, look at that. I'm not usually this decorative, you know? These little guys aren't coming off. One, two, three. All right, really, it's up to you how much sprinkle you want or whatnot, but 
this is, these are the possibilities. I am not an interior designer. I can't even decorate my own house, so. That is, that is the extent of my sprinkle placement skills. Once this is preheated, which is my oven, I will pop these into my uh, electric, uh, electric oven. Here is the air bake tray you guys were talking about, and I'll get to your questions. I'm just gonna pipe one more tray. I have a couple, I have a little bit more batter. <clears throat> so, these big circles are as big as the biggest here. Uh, if you line them up with this template, they are as big as that. So, I never pipe all the way to the end. That's why I was saying I pipe to, this is a better visual. I pipe about a quarter of an inch away from that edge. Okay, so make sure not to ever bake your paper. I'm gonna pop this on and do a couple more. Oh, it doesn't line up, does it? Okay, either way. Let's pipe a couple more. And I, I said in the newsletter, but this is, this circle and the template is a three, um, three quarters. So it's, um, oh goodness, one and three quarters inch. Not quite two inches. Oops, I forgot to do that. I'll do all of these ones. They'll have the, the unicorn. So those are all bases. <laughs> Since I didn't do the horns. And then the ears so just again like I'm not even pressing I'm just letting the batter fall out of the tip at this point and then moving it to fill and then with the horn I do press a little bit but you don't want to overdo these because it's really easy to create way too big of ears and such because the batter moves out quickly. Okay, so just kind of elongate your, your horns and then you're usually pretty good. All right, I'm gonna put in those little guys So I'm not waiting for them to dry because this is a convection oven. It, the fan really dries it up before they can crack open on me. So. These are going into the oven. Let's see if I can open this up wide enough. And then my timer, I'm gonna, Push it down to 275, and my timer is gonna be for 13 minutes. Okay, back to these guys. I've got the horns and the bases. I've got a little bit of batter left, so let's see if we can make a whole another two. Can you see on the screen? That's good, good. You push out until it's nice and empty. You can really push that batter through the tip like this. Okay. Scribe or a toothpick will be your best friend for these.
right, I'm just gonna do a couple more circles with this. Again, this is a small tip, so it can easily be overworked. So hopefully they won't be fragile tops. Again, if you're part of my newsletter, you, are, you receive that template. If not, just go online and look up unicorn template and there's lots of them out there and just print them out or you can trace it from your computer screen even onto parchment. This is my original uh, unicorn template and I honestly just traced them and had them like this and finally enough people were asking for it so I digitalized it. But let's put some sprinkles on here and then I'll get to your guys' questions. Three hundred and thirty. Yeah, I think that's about. Cause three. Um, sorry, one thirty. Yes, I think that's about the temperature I bake at in this oven. I don't really like the blue stars. I feel like they're making it look like a a gender reveal or something. I'm so. Uh oh. Guess what, guys? I got a circle. Don't bake that one. It's gonna go right through. on that one two okay I know this is taking too much of my time alrighty so here we go boom we got some sprinkles oh I forgot these guys can't be baked. As I push it in. Okay. You can definitely do like little, little circular, like confetti things. Um, trying to, there are tiny little ones here. Like there's little circles. And those ones won't go through. Those ones are fine if you want to bake those little guys. Okay, okay. They're starting to be dry anyway. So I am going to put these into my preheated oven. It's at 300 Fahrenheit, 150 Celsius. And for me, for my oven, I drop my gas stove down to 290 just to keep my internal temperature around 300, 305 with the air bake tray. So if you're part of that newsletter, you got these. All right, this was that original template. I moved from California to Oregon and I kept this template, I don't know why. You know, when you're old school, you don't want to print anything. Works beautifully. Let's get this back to a different. Does that work? Okay. We've got our macarons, a bacon. Okay, let's see here. Very humid place. 
think he made 99 yesterday. Is there a way to add egg white powder? Is that why? Nancy, yes, I add egg white powder with um, when the environment is pretty moist, just to help dry things out and strengthen the meringue. Yes, Anna, I, I have a gear spatula, uh, sorry, I call it gear, it's gear. I have a gear spatula. Barb just sent this to me from Sweet Mac Shop. I just didn't wanna try a new one on a live, but I'm super excited to use this. It's like flexible up top, but super sturdy down here and a little bit of a scoop. So something I'm not used to, so I'm excited to try that. Okay. Can we start these lives with a cocktail? You can start these lives with anything you'd like, Anna. I love it. Um. <laughs> yes, I love that. Something that pairs well with, yes, I love it. Okay, let's talk. Ooh, my uh, oven must have been pretty hot because my feet are going insane. I'll show you guys what's going on in my... The feet are huge right now. It's hard to see the back ones, but I'll show you when they come out. Usually they go, they'll like puff up pretty high and then they'll settle down. Okay. Let me see here, I'm trying to catch up. Cocktails for everyone here. Sherman, thank you for being here from Washington. Okay, yes, around, so I'm, I'm assuming 275 Fahrenheit is around 130, yeah. Do you try at every baking session? Um, Catherine. I, is it Catherine? Uh, Catherine is asking, I'm unsure. Oh, do you, oh, test. Do I eat my the things I make? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I run, I run a lot. Okay. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm a little slow. Thank you, Heidi. Let's talk some decorative products. So talk, you know, sprinkles, any kind you'd like. I feel like the jimmies you can just get at the super supermarket for a great price. If you want special ones, then Sweeta Polita, Fancy Sprinkles, um, the Sprinkle Pop has really cute things. Those are some of the brands that I know off of the top of my head. But really, um, just like those at, if you have a restaurant depot card, they have this huge jug of rainbow sprinkles. If you're in a huge production, that is the most bang for your buck. There are fun colors, rainbows, of course. What's better than that? And you get a huge thing. You don't have to worry about picking out. They're cute, but they're not as functional, picking out all of the, the chocolate ones and stuff. Save them for me, I'll eat them. See, I eat some. Um, Okay, decorative things. Someone in, I haven't responded yet, because this morning was a little crazy, but someone was asking what markers I use for the eyes of the unicorns. I prefer Chef Master for the eyes. These are nice. They have a thicker end and then a thinner end but the thinner end still isn't like super thin. Hi, Caroline. So if you want super thin details on something, these were from Bean and Butter Bake Shop, which is in Pasadena. They have a storefront in Pasadena, California. If you're not there, they also do online orders. And this is, I don't know the brand. It says food colors, liner, Deli and Arts Bakery, easy and fun. Maybe it's Deli, Deli and Arts. So these are super fine, super fine. I don't like to do eyes with these because um, then they're like super thin, but if you're doing little teeny details in like super ornate character macarons, you would definitely want these fine tip ones. 
but I like the thicker for, you know, a big clumsy eye. <laughs> I'm not, my attention to detail guys is slim. Okay, so Chef Master and these little ones are really good from Bean and Butter Bake Shop. Wilton also has some, but I've never had the best luck with them. They're pretty fat and they dried out really fast for me, but maybe it's because I was letting my kids use them. So you might have better luck with Wilton brand. And um, if you're super like paint, paint oriented, uh, you can get a little teeny brush. This is Sweet Sticks. This is from Bean and Butter as well, Bake Shop. And you can draw and paint on eyes. Um, I am so shaky, I would, I would not do well with painting on eyes. But also the Sugar Art has this awesome set. Not this purple one, that's Wilton, but this is, these are all the Sugar Art and they have a really nice thin one as well that you could do fine detail with if you want to paint. So Sugar Art, um, Bean and Butter, Fake Shop, different places to get really fine tip um, paint brushes as well as markers for those details on things. Edible, of course. And then let's check on, I have one more minute. They're still, still a bacon, a little bit soft. And then let's see here. They work great, I use this also. Yay, Heidi uses them. And then, yeah, they're really nice. And then if, when we wanna get a little bit fancy with our with our unicorns we want to like paint the inside of the ears you like that paint the inside of the ears and then the horn I want to make it gold so you can either do a sterling pearl like wedding gold I like to use sterling pearls and then I, I mix them with either of like a, a really like Everclear like strong vodka or um, extract if you have like a lemon extract or it doesn't have to be clear because you don't need this to be clear. So you could use a vanilla extract or the color solution is awesome. These things don't leave a bitter taste, so that's nice. Um, just make sure if you use like a lemon extract that you want your final flavor to have a little lemon flavor in it. So here are our Unicorn macarons. Let's let them cool and then we'll do a little decor. Ooh, I just love, unicorns are so happy. Okay, so if we're doing, I'll show when we're about to, um, when we're about to paint on the details because it dries up really fast. If you've ever used uh, an extract or an alcohol to make a paint with a powder, you know that it, the alcohol evaporates, the extract evaporates because it's alcohol. Same with this color solution is uh, has a lot of alcohol in it. That's the number one ingredient, cane alcohol. And then there's a few other things that make it a little bit more buttery like the glycerin. So you don't wanna mix this well in advance. You wanna do it right beforehand or else you're gonna dry out and have to use more product. It doesn't dry as quickly as your extracts, but just in case, again, this is color solution from the Sugar Art. And I'm gonna use Super Gold. And this is a Sterling Pearl. It's not the same as the Master Elites that I use for coloring my shells. This is um, more of like a painting on finish that's gonna sparkle. Not to be confused with Diamond Dust, which is less coverage, but a lot of sparkle. Okay all this decorative talk. My unicorns got so big. That template, I'm just not used to using. Like if you see, this template's a lot smaller. So they're just a lot bigger than I'm used to. But here's what's going on in the oven, halfway through baking. I'm gonna set another timer for 10 minutes. No, nine minutes. Let's do nine. 
Oops, I'm turning the heat up. Don't do it. Time. Sorry, you're so close to my face right now. Okay. Okay. How we doing, everybody? I feel like I scared everyone with how close we were. <laughs> how close we were um, just a second ago. We're good, we're good. Okay, Mary, thank you. Let me try to do this so it's not, okay. Okay, so we showcased that. Here's some diamond dust. How often do you go live? I go live, Tammy, every other week. So I try to do it every two weeks. I go live on Wednesday. This is a mermaid sparkle and I thought, why not? Like, why not pair mermaid with some unicorns too to make it extra magical? So, here's our cuties. I'm gonna take them off the mat. I'm gonna take them off the baking tray, let's be specific, so that they can cool faster. Because I want to do some decorations. I'll bring you guys down. You don't need to see my face. Okay. Let's get those gloves back on, shall we? So cute. Now, they're still a little warm, so I shouldn't be touching them quite yet. But you know me. I'm always anxious to show you guys the next step. Hi from Romania, hello. Hi Alicia too. My unicorn cocktail, yes. A unicorn cocktail sounds magical. Okay, so these two are off, so you pair them up and see how it has the horns and the ears out. And that's beautiful like that, right? You don't have to have it matched up completely, which is nice because they're very forgiving. You don't have to worry about pairing them exactly to the next. I love that about unicorns. Okay. Because they're not completely dry, I'm pulling off a little bit of the back. That's a good, I'm sorry, not dry, um, because they're not completely cooled. It's a good sign to wait, you guys. Don't keep doing it like I'm doing it. <laughs> Oh, I just love them though. See how I like when it points down, kind of like a mane, like a horse's mane, you know? Did you guys know the national, I think it's the national animal of Scotland is a unicorn. Isn't that amazing? That's why we named our children with Scottish names, because we want to be Scottish for the unicorn claim to fame. Our, my son's name is Ewan. Ewan, and my daughter's name is Isla. I don't have the cool accent though to go with it. Okay, so we've got all of our unicorns. Now I've seen some people, they get some fondant. Instead of draw, um, making the horn, they will roll up fondant into a super cute horn and put that on their, on their uh, macaron shell and use that as their horn. That's super fun and that's a lot more work in my opinion, but that is an option if you guys like the look of, you know, more of the cake look of a unicorn, like cake with the big ears and then the nice like spiraled horn. I forget who it was, but someone else, like you can paint, you know, stripes on your horn too, to make it look um, more like a spiral, or someone just said, or pipe thin lines with batter, yeah. Or you could let it dry a little bit and then like make it look a little bit more textured, like Alicia said. Um, Alicia would be way better. I don't have the patience for this, but um, like segment segmenting it, and that would mean that you would definitely have to wait for it to dry. 
Okay, hopefully that made sense. I'm trying to play with them enough where our shells are a little bit drier and let's get going with our decorative stuff. So we've got our, again, sorry about the lighting. There we go, can you see that? Sterling Pearl Super Gold. And you're just gonna take a little bit of it. You don't need a ton, especially with little things like this. Oh, you know what, I think it's over here. I need those little teeny teaspoons things. I don't have that. Okay, let's do a little bit. Put it into our little palette mixer. Always close these bad boys up when you're done. And our color solution comes in a nice little easy, easy little um, squeeze bottle. There we go. Now I'm not needing like any fine detail. I'm just gonna cover in the ears. So I'm gonna use this little flat brush. Let's do this one. This little flat brush, angled a little bit. And I'm gonna see if we're at a good consistency. We just want like a paint consistency. I think that looks nice. Just a grapefruit spoon. Ooh, I've never, I don't eat grapefruits. Isn't the color solution nice? I'll have to try a grapefruit spoon. I've never seen it. Okay, so we're just gonna like color, like a, a little triangle of the, um, the ears. It's hard to do facing you guys. But that's probably not helping you guys see. But see how it's just like a little triangle. Nothing too fancy. I want to make sure I see some of that edge, the pink, and then I'm going to color the whole horn. Again, you could do like a spiraled effect on the horn. I'm just going to go for the whole thing. If you got sparkles or sprinkles in the way, the more the merrier. If more is gold, that's just happiness right there. Color those sprinkles gold. And look, we didn't even have to split our batter. We got our, our beautiful gold horn and some ears. We'll draw some eyes. See, that's easy though, right? Like if I can do it, you could do it. This is black, hopefully. I'm gonna use the smaller tip, but it's not like super, super fine. I get super nervous when I do this in front of people. So don't judge my shakiness, all right? All right, I'm just gonna find about the center and go a little bit over, draw some lashes. And then we got the eyes, how cute. Don't worry about a nose, that's too much. But let's do some blush. Um, I could do have this pink that might look good or we could do gold blush let me try this you're all shaky <laughs> yeah good mary i thought i was cute heart thanks stephanie i need to find a grapefruit spoon um oops i wasn't even on it wasn't even on the camera let me find this one color i think would look really nice i think it's called passion fruit It, but I think hollyhock. Hollyhock will be good. I can't find the passion fruit one. I think it, I don't think I'm making that up. <laughs> Let me get these out. Here is our second tray of unicorns. Let's let those cool. 
Okay. Let's do this hollyhock. It's gonna be super flirty and fun. So with this, I'm just gonna get a round brush. Find a round brush. Nice little rounded brush. This is the Sugar Art. If you guys are buying products from the Sugar Art, make sure to use Bake Du Jour as a promo code and you can save 15%. Okay, let's see what this hollyhock will look like. I just kind of dab it in dry. This is also, I think a sterling, yeah, sterling pearl. We're gonna use it dry this time. Whereas with the gold sterling pearl, we made it wet, but we're just gonna dab. Okay, you might not be able to see on, on with this lighting, but it is super pretty. Just dab, dab, dab. Oh, I love it. You can't tell with the lighting, I feel like. But they're pretty, they're pretty. We can see it, Mary says we can see it, yay! Now if you have a ton of excess um, dust on, you can get a clean brush and just kind of wipe off. I like to use a fan brush for that. That's what this is, a, like fan brush. Just kind of wipe off the excess like that. It's super, it's just really, really subtle, but it has this extra sweet flirtiness to it. I love it. And of course, diamond dust. You can just sprinkle this stuff on anything. Um, I don't know how it's gonna pair with it, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on its horn. You can also kind of just put bare the color solution anywhere you want and sprinkle this on over it and it'll stick really well. Let me put some sprinkle. That kind of brings in the blue of the sprinkles with it. I'll take pictures after because I feel like it doesn't ever show up as well on here. But you can see the blue, it brings in the with the hollyhock with the kind of shimmeriness of the blush and then the color of the sprinkles and the blue in the up here, it looks really nice. I'll take pictures. It's not gonna be, you're not, it's not gonna show up. Okay. Yeah, they're so fun. I feel like they're really pretty. So that was mermaid diamond dust, hollyhock, sterling pearl. I mean, there's so many fun products out there you can use. This is mostly sugar art stuff. Um, I don't have as much, I've heard of like, oh, I don't know the other brands, but like these kind of like cover the whole gamut, but that definitely doesn't mean it's the only option. So if you don't have any of it, you know, it's not like they're the only things that will work. But that is the unicorn. And I love filling unicorns with magical fillings, like birthday cake or um, like marshmallow, marshmallow deliciousness. Yeah, that's it. Do you guys have questions? Can you bang the tray too much? Um, great question. Heidi, was that you? Yeah. So Heidi asked if it's possible to bang the tray too much. And I feel like <clears throat> you can definitely bang them a lot where you're going to have them um, spread out a little too much. But I've never, ha I've never seen a direct relationship between banging and hollowness, but that doesn't mean it's not true. I just can't speak to it. Um, I. I feel like it wouldn't be, like I feel like if you're banging it out, you're releasing those air bubbles. So in fact, it would be the opposite of getting it more hollow. But sometimes counter things are counterintuitive with macarons. So I wish I could say precisely what is going on, but I can't. Um, yeah, I really, I think she's pretty. And I'll, I'll do a nice picture because, sorry, they're not paired up well because I want you guys to see her in her beauty. She's got style, she's got grace. 
Um, yeah, I think that's it. I look, looking. Oh, thank you, Ian. Um, I appreciate it so much. It, it was a little shorter than I think I was ready for, but it, it grows, so I appreciate it. Let's see here. Anyone have more questions? Does the pink color you used in your Macs have a shine to it? The actual pink in my macarons? No, it is just, it's just a coral. Um, no shine, just powdered uh, matte finish, I guess you could call it. <laughs> Since I'm baking it, it doesn't really keep a, a super shine to it, but um, it's just a nice little light the, with how much I use a light pink color and I would open them up for you but I really don't want to they all have their mates so I don't want to waste them I do want to check out here's that second tray it's still pretty hot but I wanted to see if the tops were fragile on those those after those ones that I popped yeah, they're, they're a little bit thinner than I love, but they weren't like super fragile. But look, they're definitely a little bit more fragile on this one because it went, it got extra worked through that small, small piping tip. So if you macronage to the perfect consistency and then put it in with a really small tip, the batter can get overworked. So, not sure if you can see it on here, but these look a little bit, a little bit translucent on top. And it's not like insane, it really isn't. But they are gonna be a tiny bit more fragile because um, I probably mixed a little too much for um, piping it through a, a thin piping tip. Like there's no, these are not fragile one bit, but for that other oven, it doesn't do as well with, um, it doesn't give me any, let me, let me think of how I wanna say this. This good oven will help, even if I make some mistakes, it's really efficient and makes a nice macaron. My gas oven will show my mistakes and um, it's not as efficient and it will cause the softer tops with over mixing and stuff like that. I'm not saying I over mix, but with that small tip to pipe a whole circle as the batter was already at its point, like when I'm just pushing it out for an ear, it's fine. Those big unicorn macarons are beautiful. But when I made a whole circle with it, I'm pushing that batter out pretty hard and that's when it's a little bit over mixed and it has a little fragile, fragile top. I can tap it, it's not cracking, but I'm just being super picky to help us all learn. Okay, what brand is the countertop oven? It's Oster, Oster, O-S-T-E-R, Oster. My countertop's really messy, I'm sorry about that. That's it. That's it. It's on my Amazon storefront if you're interested in checking it out. Um, someone said Costco had it. When I looked, it was a little bit different of a version, but um, I very much enjoyed this oven. It does not fit a full, like a standard half sheet size. This is smaller than our regular half sheet sizes, so if you want this toaster oven for a bigger production, I would not recommend it. It's not gonna fit a ton of your product. You're gonna have to either get one of these French steel pans that are quite expensive from JB, JP, JB Prince. Um, it J, now I'm like blanking on it. JP, no, JB Prince. There we go. I can write it out. When I um, say it, I get confused with P's and B's. So I have a very difficult time with that one. Little processing thing. JB Prince has really great products. They have a store in New York City, but you can also buy online and that's what these are from. 
um, this is French steel, but a half sheet tray, a standard American half sheet tray is a lot bigger and it does not fit. It does not fit in my toaster oven. Okay, all right, I think that's it. I'm gonna keep decorating these um, and make sure my kids get home from school okay. Oh, Tammy, I'm so happy to hear you've learned a lot. I love it. Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. What is the brand of the counter? Okay, just making sure I see everyone. If you had more questions, feel free to put them in that chat box um, in the next couple minutes or else I'll say sayonara and see you next time. Thank you for being here. I honestly, I haven't baked maybe since the last live. So I always get sad and this brings me back. Being able to bake is so good and talk to you guys. Thank you for being here, Sophie. Yeah, it is my pleasure. Kian, I'm so glad I got to see your name pop up. I hope you're doing well. Missed you. How's the new puppers? Oh, my new puppy. She's great. She's huge. She's a nuisance, but she's worth it. <laughs> Where did you get your coloring the power colors? Uh, so you can't, Gabby, you can't get the sugar art from Amazon, but if you go to thesugarart.com, that's where it is. And the colors specifically for macarons are gonna be Master Elites. They have different lines. They have Elites, which are great for painting, especially like on chocolate and stuff like that. Master Elites are great for baking your color. So Master Elites for baking your shell colors and then decorative colors like Sterling Pearls Elites and um, Diamond Dusts are gonna be more decorative after baking things. Celine, hi, I'm good. How are you doing? Gabs, thanks for being here and catching the end. Oh, Steffi, I'm so happy to do it. Honestly, I wish I could get more edited videos out. Lately, it hasn't been the case. I still have a, a Italian method macarons I need to edit. I filmed so stay tuned for that next month. It'll come out, um, but this is, this is the best. I get to interact with you guys. I just wish I could see your faces too. Thanks again, Sherman. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's Shirley. Shirley. Thank you for being here, Shirley. Thanks, David, for being here. I hope you're doing well. I hope you guys are all seeing some springy spring springs um, happening because it is cheering me up to have signs of spring and winter. Bye-bye. Amy, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I very much appreciate your support and being here. So thank you guys. And I hope you guys all have a great rest of your Wednesday. I hope you have some sunshine coming your way. If not, make your own sunshine while you can dance in the kitchen. We can dance if we want to. Do I have to like pay? If I'm singing a song, pay royalties. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go because I am getting weird per usual. But thank you guys so much for being here. Aw, well thank you, Amy. I hope you can, yeah, rewatch. Um, I appreciate that so much. Even if you're coming late and you're, thank you. Much love, you guys. Happy last week of, last couple days too. Last couple days of March. Hope you end your month off well. Bye. Oh, I don't think I can press. Dang it. Can't press my phone with the gloves on. Much love, everyone. Happy baking. Thanks for being here.